So now in this series of 11 videos of Improv for Beginners, today's video and last week's video we had a look at minor keys. So now you can really hear the difference between a major key and a minor key when we're going through chord progressions, improvisation and compositions. G'day viewers, I'm Tim. And I'm Don. And together, together we, we are, are My Aim, aim the, the Improvised, improvised line. line. And an innovative method. Welcome to our channel guys. We're all about playing music, improvisation and the cycle of movable keys. This is the 11th and final lesson in our first series of Improv for Beginners. Two weeks ago we had a look at the key of E flat, which had three flats in it, because it was related to C minor, the tonic minor, which we had a look at last week. So today, in the final video, we're having a look at the relative minor of C major, which is A minor. When you're looking to find the relative minor on the cycle of keys, we move three keys anti-clockwise on the cycle of keys, so we go from C, G, D to A, and A minor and C major have the same key signature. When we're trying to find the relative minor on the piano, again it will be down from C down one, two, three half tones, and then you're in the key of A minor. So last week we looked at the tonic minor, we said it was up, three half tones, the relative minor is down three half tones. Really easy to remember. So today's chord progression is one, two, five, three in A minor. for the final time in this series. We'll play through the chord progression for 16 bars so you can hear the chord progression in a nice simple ballad style and we'll make up a simple little three or four note theme to go with it. Again, when we have a look at this on the cycle of keys, we can see that we've got three chords together there, B minor, E7 and A minor, and then the C is by itself because we're looking at the minor chords in the key of A minor. This will give us two minor chords, or actually a minor and a diminished, two major chords, actually a major and an augmented, and because we've got three groups together there, we've automatically got two dominants and two tonics to play with. Can create a bit of fun when you're doing the improvised line or creating a new composition. So we've got the B diminished going back to E. And the E going back to A minor. Again, when we look at all the chords, we like to look at the common notes, and this is a really good example as to why I like looking at common notes in chords. We look straight away at the A minor, we've got A, C, E, and then G sharp, to give us an A major 7 flat 3. We've got B, D, F, A, that'll give us a B minor 7 flat 5. The E7 
dominant chord E, G sharp, B and D and then the C augmented C, E, G sharp with the B for a C major 7 sharp 5 so just have a look at that for a moment when we're going from the E7 to the C augmented as it is in the chord progression of 1, 2, 5, 3 you've got E, G, B, D and in the C major you've got E, G sharp, B only got to change one note Ooh. then when we're going from 3 back to 1 if you're playing the chord progression through twice we've got the C, E, G sharp and B and C, E and G sharp are also in the A chord ah. so at least three common notes happening when we're going through the chord progression should be a lot of fun the other thing I like to look at of course is chord inversions you can have fun with that if we're playing it just in the root position we've got A minor to B diminished to E 7 to G augmented so going from the A minor to the B diminished both chords would move up but if you use an inversion you can make the bass line move up and the chord move down and that's where you get a lot of fun so let's have a look at the improvisations